Hey guys, so Dr. Sean Thomas here again. I just want to show you a couple of stretches you can do if you cannot get out of your chair. If you're working for hours at a time, or you're someone who's always on the go and doesn't really have time to take away from the job, there are things you can do in your chair to kind of make sure that your body stays right. And um, again, with life, we get busy, everything that we do is kind of in front of us, right? Work, kids, family, typing, texting, TV, Everything is interior. So there are a lot of things that, that happen with those things and they all are based on posture. Like our posture kind of changes. We get around the shoulders, we get typhotic posture, we kind of hunch over, we have back pain, our neck pain, our shoulder pain, um, sometimes even tension headaches, and um, tightness in our glutes and our hamstrings. So I wanted to show you a couple things to work on just to make sure that when you do these, you can kind of have some relief and you can get back to doing whatever you want to do. So let's start at the top. The neck is awesome, right? Everyone's neck should be able to move up and down, left to right, no problem. And sometimes we have problems sleeping at night, you may have a crick neck or something like that. Or if you have the computer power at the time, you just be, tend to have this forward head posture where everything is focused on the screen, right? So the best way to kind of work on that is gonna be uh, fivefold. Number one, we're gonna do some stretches, sorry. <laughs> we're gonna do some stretches for the neck. Upper trap stretches, right? Your traps are basically the muscles that are right here. They help you do this up and down, right? And as they get tight, you'll see them slowly rise up with pressure, with tension, with stress, right? With life, New York City traffic, what have you. We get a lot of tension in our neck. So best way to do that is, even in your chair, right? Taking that one hand, putting it on the opposite side of your body, and letting your hand pull your head towards one direction. You're gonna feel a stretch on this side, the opposite side of where my hand is right now, right? And you're gonna actually keep your hand down towards either your chair or your desk for support. And you'll see, I'm not bending my body over, I'm nice and straight, I have good posture, and you don't even have to do that if you put your hand behind your back and get the same kind of stretch this way, right? We're gonna hold it for about 30 seconds. Of course, you're gonna do both sides to make sure that both sides are nice and even. That's upper trap stretch. Number two, levator scap stretch. Your muscles that have to make your neck Connect from the back of your occiput or your skull down to your shoulder blade. It's called your levator scapula muscle. So the best way to do that is take that same hand, put it on the back of your head now, not the side, but the back, the diagonally. And you're gonna turn your head over to the one side and bring it down diagonally. You're gonna do a different kind of a stretch, but it's still stretching out the muscles that deal with tension and deal with stress on the back. Again, you can hold your chair or behind your back and get that same kind of a stretch. A bit of capital stretch, again, 30 seconds. Of course, you're gonna do both sides. Number three, chin tucks. I'm gonna turn this way so you can see me. So chin tucks are awesome, because again, with everything that we do here, my posture should be upright. That's why we have good chairs to give us support, right? But sometimes, as we go from here at nine o'clock, this may turn to 12 o'clock, three o'clock and five o'clock, you're done, right? So, the muscles that we have to work on are gonna be for the neck. Most people have what we call a forward head posture where the pec muscles are tight and the head comes forward this way, right? This is very, very tight and this is too far stretched out. So you want to reduce that. We do a chin tuck. Again, not a double chin, but you're going to tuck that chin in so that your ears are in line with your shoulder blade or your shoulder, your acromion process on both sides and everything is nice and lined up. Almost as if we were puppets, right? If someone had a string, they're pulling your head up this way to make your head nice and straight, right? Elongating the spine. As you can see, I do that here to here. My posture automatically changed, not just from my head, but all the way through my torso and my lower back, right? So, chin tucks. You can just hold these for about 10 or 12 seconds. And you can just do them 10 times. A great way just to work on posture and realigning yourself so that when you go back to work, you know where you are, right? <clears throat> Next, rhomboid stretch. Hands in front of you, just like this. If you're holding a ball or something that's gonna be in front of you, right? You're gonna have your hands out in front of you, and all you're gonna do is reach those hands out. And you're gonna feel those shoulder blades opening up in the back. The purpose of this is that a lot of that pressure we do with upper traps, and we do with our rhomboids or our scapula muscles come right this way. A lot of tension. So to alleviate that, you gotta stretch them out, right? Nice in front of you, and then what you can also do is tip the head down. By bringing the head down, you get more of a stretch from your lower neck muscles, and that allows some pressure to be put off your shoulders, off your neck, off your back, and allows it to feel a little better. Last one, P 
pec stretch. Now you can do this a number of ways, but again, if you cannot get up, best way to do it would be right in your chair, right? My hands would be behind me. Grab the hands behind you and just give a big chest, right? What I'm doing is I'm elongating the muscles that are here, right? With all of this you've been doing all day. That gets eradicated, posterior chain, shoulders back, not rounded anymore, hands behind me. A good, again, good posture. I'm just stretching out. Stretching out all through here. You're gonna hold that for about, again, 30 seconds, and you can do it again three or four times. Those are simple things you can do just to work on the upper extremities being stretched, either from the neck down, right down to the shoulders. Let's keep going. So, <clears throat> our shoulders, we have our posterior capsule muscles, right? Those things also get very, very tight. So we gotta stretch those things out. You probably did it when you were in fifth grade, sixth grade, gym class. It's very, very standard. You see athletes do this kind of stuff. Because again, it does work, right? Posterior capsule stretch, inferior capsule stretch. Again, things you can just work on to make sure that your shoulders and elbows and arms stay nice and flexible. Because again, my doctors, my dentists, my plumbers, my electricians, you're doing static movement, my dentists, all day, right? My surgeons. So it's good to make sure that when you're doing these movements, you're gonna get tight. Do a little stretch every now and then, right? I went to a class um, this past weekend with a, a runner named Coach Joe. He said every couple miles, stretch out a little bit. You gotta stretch out a little bit because just to get blood flow moving in those things, it's gonna be a great thing to do. So never a bad thing to stretch, especially for these shoulders because they kind of neglect it. You work on arms, you work on legs, we don't really work on these certain things, so you have to start working on them, right? Posterior capsule stretch, inferior capsule stretch, right? Let's move on. Rotations, again, going down to the low and mid back, right? You can put one hand on your knee and literally rotate or turn your body towards one side. I'm gonna feel a stretch. If I'm turning to my left, I'm gonna feel a stretch on my right side, right? I'm gonna hold that, again, for about 30 seconds. You're right in your chair. You don't need to go anywhere and even get up. You can do these things to work on low back pain and to work on having better posture, right? And of course, with all things, you gotta do both sides, which is nice and simple, right? I'm not deviating forward. I'm not reaching backwards. I'm right in that same plane. I'm just turning my body. If I turn to the right, I feel stretch on my left side. Again, 30 seconds, left to right. Those glutes, if you sit for a long time, right? You sit for it, again, you're talking about nine to five. Maybe you get an hour break, and sometimes even your hour break is going to be at your desk having lunch, right? So, the best way to work on these glutes is to stretch them out. Knee to chest stretches are awesome. It's a great, easy way just to work on stretching out the glute muscles that are constantly on. And the best way to elongate them is going to be to bring that knee up to your chest as high as you can and just to hold it. So, if you have knee problems, you don't want to bend that knee because your knee hurts. You're going to grab under that knee and do the same thing. Bring that knee up and just kind of hold it this way. If you have a hard time grabbing that knee, you can put like a towel or a sheet or a pillow or a jacket or a shirt, something like that, right over that knee and help that knee to come up this way. Same thing, right? If you can't get your hand around that knee because either it's too heavy or you're not strong enough to do that, put something around it and use that thing to kind of bring your leg up. You know, hold that again for about 30 seconds. Of course, you have to do both sides. The hamstrings, they get very, very tight. Why? Because you've been sitting all day, right? And the muscles that, when they're bent like this, they're shortened. So you have to elongate them. They have to be straight. So you can put your foot on either a chair, like this, if you had two chairs, I put a chair out in front of me, right? And you put that chair out in front of you, and literally just have your foot on that other chair and leaning forward. Now again, if I can't touch my toes, right? I would use like a towel or a sheet or a pillowcase or Again, something I can wrap around my foot to kind of make sure I can bring my body closer. What I need is that stretch that's gonna go from my butt to the back of my knee, all the way to my calf muscle. Once you feel that stretch, then you've got it. And again, you hold that for about 30 seconds, you can do it four times. If you can't do any of that, scratch all that. Sit in front of your chair a little bit. Put the towel or sheet of pillow face down and lean forward. I'm still getting that stretch right through here. I'm still getting that stretch right through here, right? I'm getting that stretch right through here, right through the back of the leg. And I put that hand, if I can, on my toe, or I use that towel, and I lean forward and I feel that stretch right through here. Again, four times, <laughs> four times, 30 seconds each. Last thing. 
piriformis stretch. Most people can't do this. And even me, I'm not the best example of this. Because as you can see, I'm very, very tight in my, my hips, right? And I've always, I always have been. But most people should be able to at least get this leg up. And either to bring it up towards their chest or to push it down this way. It's a great way just to work on stretching those hip muscles that get very, very tight and stiff. Now, if you can't do all this, right, and that's kind of hard for you, you can bring it down here and get the same kind of stretch. My knee's gonna be at least as close to my body as it can be, and you're gonna hold that stretch. Or you can push out this way if you want to, to feel that in the glutes and the piriformis muscle. And again, if you bring it in, you'll feel a little stretch also in that same area. These are all things you can do for both sides. Again, 30 seconds each twice on each side, just to make sure that you're getting the, the, the stretch on both sides, and it feels great, I guarantee you. You do all these things, right? It took us like two seconds just now, but it'll take you about, you know, five minutes or so to go from head to toe. But I guarantee you, if you do these things for at least five minutes, every hour, every two hours, when you get up out of that chair, you're gonna feel a little different. It's not gonna be as stiff, or as painful, or as uncomfortable to move. And it's not going to feel like you've been sitting at your desk for hours at a time. Although you probably are. It's not going to feel that way. So, these are my tips for you. I hope you take them to heart. And uh, I wish you the best.